Well, good day, my dear friends. This is Dr. Wanda Bettinghouse, and this is our weekly Friday live interview. And today we're going to have a wonderful guest, Cheryl Rojic, who is a not only a beautiful woman who's passionate about what she does, but she's also a kind of a food guru, I think. Uh, she's been working in, uh, as in the nutritional realm for many years now teaching classes, mentoring and coaching people. And, you know, she's going to tell us a little bit about how she got started in this wonderful uh, um, endeavor that she has been doing, starting out with her own health concerns and realizing that she needed to focus more on food. And I've known Cheryl for, gosh, probably 15 years or so. And uh, she's helped me with some of my patients. And I'm very grateful for her that she's available right here in Denver and we'll be putting up her contact information as we move along. So let's welcome Cheryl. Hello. Hello there. How Thank are you, for, you? I'm well. Thank you for inviting me. You bet. I think a lot of people have been eager to hear from you. So let's start with, tell us a little bit about how you got started and what you're doing now. A little okay. bit about your story, okay? Yeah, so my food story, um, my food focus story starts back in 1997 when I was diagnosed with thyroid cancer and I was working a corporate job that I didn't like. Um, it was one of those situations where I was being paid really well, the benefits were great, but I didn't like it and I couldn't leave because of everything else. <laughs> and the cancer diagnosis came along mm. and was a wake up call as it is for many people who get a diagnosis. And I started to really be concerned about what I was putting into my body and also about my lifestyle choices and what I was doing for a living. I wasn't feeling fulfilled. So I, um, during my recovery, I found the United States Personal Chef Association, and mm. I took a course on how to be a personal chef, and um, that was in uh, 2000, I started my personal chef business, and I cooked, I just loved to cook. I cooked for anybody who wanted food, um, no health concerns, I just focused on delicious, yummy food, and over time, um, I was feeling a little bit burned out. Um, my own health was still not great. I really liked what I was doing as a personal chef, but it was starting to wear on my body and I was 40 pounds overweight. My hair was falling out. My skin was gray. I just looked like the walking dead. And um, then I was, at that time I was diagnosed with a second cancer. Mm. and had a wake up call again. Um, and I went from doctor to doctor to doctor saying, you know, asking for help, what can I do? We changed medications over and over again. And finally, one doctor said, why don't we think about nutrition? And this was long before the internet. Um, and I said, okay, what do I do? Where do I start? And he said, I don't know. Um, get a book. <laughs> so, a good book. I like it. Right. So I, yourself. <laughs> right, right. So my library grew. I started learning different things about how food, the energy of food reacts to our, our own energy and started seeing really great results personally. And at that time, I started incorporating those ideas into my personal chef business. And I really wanted to cook for people that had health issues that could be helped with food and lifestyle choices. So um, a lot of the people that I was cooking for were heart patients. They were in their 80s, didn't want to change anything. They just said, my doctor said I can't have salt. So I just cooked food without salt. And I knew they didn't enjoy it. Um, used a lot of herbs and spices and things to add some flavor. And um, then I thought, well, how do I teach people to help themselves like I helped myself? And I looked at some program ideas. I became certified as a holistic health coach, and that's where I am now. And since I was so involved with cooking and sharing meals, uh, cooking classes are a big part of what I offer now. 
Yeah, that's wonderful. I think we've had a few of our patients actually take some of your classes. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember a few years ago, we did a uh, joint seminar on women's health. Right. And you brought delicious uh, hors d'oeuvres. So mm -hmm. that, that's absolutely wonderful. Maybe in the future, we can actually do a demonstration. Uh, absolutely. We can get our cameras and do whatever we want to. But that's a fascinating story that you ended up having some pretty bad uh, health issues. And you, you I must, did you go through traditional therapy too? I did not. I had surgeries and I did not have chemo or radiation for either of the cancers. So. Wonderful. So you just started doing your homework and found out that you could make a tremendous change in your health by eating differently and better food. Right. 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 Okay. right. All right, so uh, I think, so you have integrated this kind of eating into your life every day. Correct, and sure, I, I still have my indulgences, but that's part of being you know, feeding my soul. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but um, even something like if I make um, something with eggplant and tomatoes, and I just, I just feel the energy of it and, and the nutrition that it's gonna give my body, um, so mo most people might say, like, ooh, eggplant, I'm, you know, that's health food. I don't want to eat that. But when you get into the habit of um, relating to your food and, and actually understanding the energy of it, that just fuels your body. It fuels every cell in your body. Yeah, that idea of the food being itself has energy. And when we bring it into the, our body and we break it down into the nutrients that are in the food, then it goes into our whole system and energetically too. Exactly. Exactly. So, so you do classes. Tell us a little bit about classes. My classes uh, right now are mostly virtual. We did bring back some live classes for a while, but with everything going on in the world, um, we're gonna, I'm going to focus more on online classes, shorter classes, more affordable, so people don't have to sit in front of the computer for two hours. Um, so I'm mm -hmm. going to keep them simple, but full of information. My classes focus on plant-based cooking or plant-based meals, not because I'm opposed to meat. Um, I do enjoy meat. I definitely um, watch the sources of the meat that I eat. Um, but most people can get enough animal protein or animal products into their diet without a lot of thought. Um, mm -hmm. But a, a majority of people, I would say, probably don't get enough plant foods, not enough fruits and vegetables. And that's where all the antioxidants are going to come from that are going to fight all that internal rusting of your body. Oh, I like that. Uh, internal rusting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because all, yeah, all those uh, inflammatory foods really put your body on fire, don't they? Exactly. Yeah. So you mentioned uh, the source of animal protein. So what do you recommend in terms of animal protein? Um, yeah, so um, red meat, I know a lot of people avoid red meat. It's not necessarily a bad thing. It's probably not something people should have every single day for sure. But if you are going to eat red meat, um, look for pasture raised or 100% grass fed organic. That's really important because going back to the idea of the energy of food, um, feedlot cattle, they're they're fed garbage literally yeah i know and their life they're in constant stress so their muscles which is the meat are filled with cortisol and then they are filled with fear during the slaughtering process so all that energy goes into that meat and um, also reduces the healthful benefits of that product so when you look at um, the 100% grass-fed, pasture-raised, um, they are living as an animal should. Granted, it's for the sake of human beings, um, but um, their slaughtering process is very different. Um, it's, it's done in a way that it's so quick and it's not like they're all herded into one little tube. Um, yeah. So definitely grass-fed, pasture-raised meats um, it, that if you're going to eat red meat, wild fish, um, 
there is some sustainable farm raised fish that you can get. Uh, honestly, Whole Foods and natural grocers probably offer the best option for something like that, unless you actually fish or hunt or something like that yourself. Um, and then of course with poultry, organic poultry, um, it, organic is absolutely much as possible. Yeah, because we're, we have so much toxins in our environment. Can you speak a little bit about the harmful effects of pesticides like, like uh, glyphosate? Yes, yeah, so glyphosate came about, um, started being used quite some time ago. And actually the first place that um, it started to destroy crops were in the Indian nations where they were growing the three sisters, which is the corn, the squash and the beans. Um, glyphosate started being used on those crops to separate them so they didn't have to be grown together. Um, because they all benefited each other in a certain way. And over time, um, our soils have been pretty much killed. We need microbes and, and bugs and you know all kinds of bacteria in the soil to actually put nutrition into the plants. And with the glyphosate usage, our soils are dead. That's why we need more and more weed killers and more pesticides and, and more fertilizers. Um, also glyphosate is uh, now being shown to, or has been for quite some time, shown to cause a lot of digestive issues. Um, oh, yeah. it, it affects the lining of our guts and so many children, um, I mean, children in general, if you think of their diets, mac and cheese, chicken nuggets, <laughs> you know, the, the standard. Um, and they eat all that processed food. And think of how many kids now are being diagnosed with ADHD, um, autism. Um, and you know that I, I feel that that it definitely has a connection there. Yeah, it really does uh, affect the gut lining and creates a condition that has been called leaky gut. And that's right. going to lead to so many other health problems like autoimmune disease right. and brain inflammation. Mm -hmm. I think yes. I didn't realize for a long time how connected the gut and the brain are. Right. Uh, right. But if your brain's on fire, it's going to cause brain fog and uh, decreased memory, concentration and focus, mm -hmm. irritability, just so many things. So, you know, that's why food is so important. Absolutely. And, yeah. And I think partnering with someone like you is just what all doctors should do, but especially in functional medicine, because mm -hmm. that's kind of the, the foundation of functional medicine is our nutrition and our diet. Right. So, <clears throat> okay. Um, you also told me you've just started doing some groups with women. Yes. A little bit about that. Yes. So, um, as a little side thing, um, I kept thinking about what do what do I really want in my life? Um, what do I um, feel is missing from my life and um, community? You know, and this be, this came out loud and clear during the pandemic. Twenty, I mean, we're still in it, but twenty twenty. I just want that community, that connection with other women, um, and a sense of creativity. Uh, not necessarily sitting in a craft room and you know making things, but just yeah. the creative process. Food, make, preparing food is creative. Oh yeah. Um, you know, you can be creative on a hike and, and how you view everything, how you see the nature around you. But uh, I wanted to bring women together, particularly middle-aged women. Uh, maybe there's been a major life event, um, a spouse has died or a divorce, or you're now a, an empty nester, all the kids are gone. Um, what do you do with your time with yourself? And, um, you know, a lot of women just want someone to talk to. And it's not a therapy group or anything like that. It's more for a sense of community. And then so what I'm finding is that so many women that are coming into the community have so much to share as well. So it's not just coming to get something, it's coming to give something as well also. Yeah, you know, I, I've i been uh, talking an awful lot about group appointments so that mm -hmm. people can come together. People who have a similar health challenge can come together. 
we have a brief presentation about whatever, you know, the problem is and right. some suggestions on how to do it. And then for people to share with each other, hey, you know, I didn't believe Dr. Bettinghouse that I had to do an elimination diet. But when I did, I found that my I lost a little bit of weight. It's not a weight reduction program, mm -hmm. but my I, my joints stopped hurting. Uh, my brain mm -hmm. fog cleared up. My gut got better. So that that's a yeah. And you know what I'm hearing share a lot from my patients. They are lonely. Yes. Yes. You know they're we working. Are, they working all feel lost. Home. They're working mm -hmm. from home. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't have the contact that they did have, and they're kind of you know hesitant to just go out and eat all the time. You know with all right. that's going on. So. I, even if we're just doing it on the internet, I think it's better than sitting home alone all the time and, and then using food inappropriately for mm -hmm. comfort. I mean, would you, you know, right. then we gain weight and we feel right. sluggish. So right. I think, uh, you know, as we get better, we can have more in-person group sessions, but the community really does heal, doesn't it? It absolutely does, yeah. Yeah. And uh, when I work with people um, and I, in all my classes, I talk about it, too, but it's not just what you feed your body with. It's what you feed your life with. Yeah. So um, that's a big part of the women's group, too, is um, what do you feel you're missing? Do you feel you're missing like some time to um, just share what you learned um, or what your expertise is? Um, do you want to share that with somebody? So, yeah, that's great. You know, we're going to be interviewing a man uh, in, I think in November, who has created the Institute of Poetic Medicine. So, you know, one of my dreams is to have some poetry sessions so people can express themselves. It doesn't, mm -hmm. you don't, everybody is creative. So right. what else in, the, in these groups are you thinking about doing? Um, I, I have done quite a few of them so far. We do a lot of meditation. So a lot of um, internal up here, self-care. Um, yeah. uh, I am sharing some fun things that I'm learning about. We've done cacao ceremonies. Um, I find a lot of um, different cultural type things. Last December, two Decembers ago, I did a celebration called Yola Boca Flood, which is an Icelandic, um, an Icelandic tradition of a book exchange. Oh, really? So, and we did a, a healthy hot cocoa bar with some adaptogenic herbs and homemade marshmallows and things. And then we sat around, did a meditation, and then we exchanged some of our favorite books with each other. And that was the most well-received and still talked about event that I've done with that group. Oh, that sounds wonderful. Now, how do, uh, Tom is going to put your website link on there for us in just a minute, but how, is that how the best way for people to get in touch with you? Yes, to get on my website or to email me, um, Cheryl at intentionalhealthcoach.com. And okay. um, I'm Put pretty responsive. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you know, that is wonderful. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm already ready for the hot chocolate and homemade marshmallows. <laughs> How in the world do you make homemade marshmallows? Uh, well, there's a traditional way with gelatin and then there's a vegan way, a couple different vegan ways. So I do usually do the vegan way. Vegan marshmallows? Mm -hmm. and, tr and originally marshmallows were made from marshmallow root. So actually a plant. Oh my God. Yeah. Oh, that reminds me, talk a little bit about how you use herbs and spices. Mm -hmm. So, er yeah, herbs and spices are, all of them are anti-inflammatory. They all have anti-inflammatory properties. Um, they offer a lot of flavor. They are loaded with antioxidants. And fresh herbs are best, but dried herbs are certainly okay as long as they're not, you know, 15 years old and they've lost all their their energy. Um, but I just use them as sometimes just as a pop of color. If you look at, a, say you have a chicken breast and some carrots and rice on your plate, that just thinking about it, it's a pretty dull looking plate. If you throw a little bit of parsley or basil on top of it, it really wakes it up. And 
um, gives it additional energy. Um, we eat with our eyes. So when we see something that's more appealing and colorful, we're more likely to enjoy it and take time to actually taste it. Um, a lot of spices like turmeric, um, so many people take a turmeric supplement, uh, highly anti-inflammatory. You can use that as a tea. You can use it um, in different curries or different marinades, uh, scrambled eggs. There are so many ways to incorporate it into your into your dishes. Um, in the summer, I have a huge garden outside and I've got all kinds of fresh herbs. Really? So I might go out and grab some oregano and mix it in with some tomatoes and a little bit of mozzarella cheese and um, you know, just make a really yummy salad. But, and there, there's such a huge world of spices. Um, nutmeg, nutmeg is similar to turmeric in its anti-inflammatory properties. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. And it actually helps our bodies to absorb other nutrients better, more efficiently. So a little nutmeg in your coffee or in a hot cocoa or um, you know, over some pasta or something like that really can make a difference. I wonder how many people who are listening to this are having uh, an imagination of the flavor. When you when you say basil, I love fresh basil. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes you don't use it enough. That one time I, I was visiting my dad, who is a farmer, farmer's farmer, and they, there was a whole field of basil. I couldn't believe it. Oh, and oh the smell! Gathered, I can imagine. They oh. gathered up this huge bag of basil for me, and I thought. Oh my God, how am I ever going to eat all that? But yeah, you know, I think that we forget how to use spices and herbs in our cooking. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I think that's just a, a it, are there any other, uh, what about uh, cilantro? I love cilantro. Yeah, cilantro is great. Um, in my garden, I have not been successful growing it, but it's so widely available. Um, and I always recommend getting organic Yes. Um, herbs for sure. Um, so cilantro actually helps to helps your body to eliminate some heavy metals. Yes, it's um, a detoxifier. Yes, absolutely. And a lot of people think that it might taste like soap. That's the what I've heard from so many people that say, "Oh no, no cilantro," um, and that's actually an enzyme in their um, in their saliva that makes that happen. So some people definitely do not want to eat cilantro, but there are certainly other herbs and things that can help you naturally detoxify your body. Yeah, we're all different. We're all chemically in, uh, individuals and we have different expressions of our genes. And some right. people don't digest things as well. Right. And some people are gonna perhaps, as you said, have a different uh, taste reaction to certain things. I, I didn't. I didn't know that some people thought it tasted like soap. Uh -huh. <laughs> no wonder. I think Tom doesn't like uh, cilantro. Um, well, and you speak for yourself down there. Yeah, and a lot of people um, say that they don't like anything green. And or they don't like the taste of fresh vegetables. And a lot of that has to do with our taste buds being so um, pretty much flattened from all the salt and the sugars and the hydrogenated fats and all that kind of stuff it actually deadens your taste buds. And it takes some time to clean those up and, and actually um, the, you can start to crave the fresh herbs. And fresh herbs too are expensive if you buy the little plastic box from the grocery store. So if you only need a tablespoon of fresh basil, make sure you incorporate the rest of it into something else. You can put it into soup. You can actually chop it up and put it in an ice cube tray and freeze it. So you have the fresh basil flavor right. down the road, you know, in the middle of winter when you need just a little bit. God, you're just like an encyclopedia. <laughs> I love it. I do. And let's see. Tom says, I love cilantro. Okay, Tom. Okay. Now somebody posted, uh, they said, my mom always said parsonyers. Mm -hmm. Is that true? Well, it is. Absolutely. And what in it that is calming the nerves? Um, just the different antioxidants, different okay. There, you know, just like a different vitamin does something else, like vitamin C does something different than vitamin A. There are so many different antioxidants oh, yeah. in these herbs that cause different 
different reactions. And parsley, um, you know, you used to just get the little curly parsley on your plate as a garnish. That was actually meant to be chewed on after the meal to freshen your breath and help your digestive system. And I'll bet billions and billions of those little pieces of parsley just got tossed in the trash. <laughs> I like eating it just like that. Uh -huh. um, there was something else that I was going to ask you. Um, can you, oh, about cooking, best prep for different foods. I know you can't go into every one, but uh, what kind of uh, cooking utensils should one use and cooking okay. oils and how long to cook and whether you should steam it or bake okay. it or whatever. Okay. Right. Um, so some vegetables are going to give you more nutrients when they're cooked and some of them are going to give you more nutrients when they're raw. So of course, when you think cucumber, how often would you cook a cucumber? Probably not. <laughs> carrots, a lot of people like to munch on raw carrots for the crunch, and that's certainly fine, but you're going to get a lot more of the beta carotene out of a carrot if you lightly cook it. So if you steam it or put it into a soup and eat it that way um, or roast it. Um, so as you break down the cellular walls of these fruits and vegetables with the cooking process, that releases a lot, makes it better um, Easily, yeah. easily absorbed in the human body. It's kind of like a starting the digestion process. Um, with preparation, I would say the absolute most important tool in the kitchen would be a knife, a good chef's knife. <laughs> and you want it to be sharp. Um, a dull knife is probably the most dangerous tool you can have in your kitchen because you have to put more effort into it. You smash the food rather than slice and dice. Um, so sharp knife, first of all, knowing how to use a sharp knife. And I'm going to be recording a video and uh, putting it on my website um, on how to oh, yeah. how to knife, how to choose a knife. Um, some people think, oh, a chef's knife, I need a chef's knife that's, you know, however long um, and really some people can get by with a little six inch knife it depends on how your hand holds on to it and the length of your body and, and you know how you're standing um, but um, definitely learn how to use a knife um, cutting boards people ask me do you want a wooden cutting board or a plastic one again that really depends to um, if you're doing a lot of vegetables, plant foods, a wooden, cut, wooden cutting board is great. There are certain ways that you can take care of your cutting boards to make them last longer and make sure that they're not um, covered with bacteria. Yeah. Um, plastic ones typically can go in the dishwasher. Um, but with regards to um, plant foods, um, when you buy them at the grocery store, you want to cook them or use them, however you're going to use them, um, within a couple days. You don't yeah. want to be something in your the back of the crystal drawer that is wilted. Oh, well, I better use this because it's wilted and it's not going to last much longer. Once it's wilted, the energy of it is, is dying. And that's what you're putting into your own body. So you want to make sure it's fresh. And I know grocery shopping can and get to be a hassle. Um, most of us are trying to stay away from so much grocery shopping, but really getting the fresh foods on a regular basis is important. Um, frozen is okay. And I would, um, other than canned tomatoes or beans, um, I would stay away from canned vegetables and canned fruits. Um, but there's, there's just so much I could talk about with different foods and preparations. Um, and I think we'd be here until midnight or longer, at least. Well, we won't be till midnight. But <laughs> what about uh, cookie cookware? Cookware, um, ceramic, um, uh, cast iron, the porcelain coated cast iron, or even stainless steel. Um, yeah. You don't want to use aluminum cup cookware because the aluminum can actually leach into the food. Um, it doesn't have good heat retention. Um, the aluminum is definitely bad for our brains. We don't want to get that heavy metal into our into our bodies. Um, but yeah, stainless steel is probably going to be the most common. Cast iron is phenomenal, um, especially for people that are dealing with iron deficiencies. Um, if you cook one meal a day or, or three meals a week in a cast iron pan, more than likely you'll bring that up. 
Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, because of the iron. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I grew up with cast iron skillets of every shape and size. Uh, um, what about cooking oils? Cooking oils, you have to be careful with. So there, each oil has a different smoke point, which means um, when it starts to smoke at a certain temperature. You really never want an oil to get to the smoking point. Once it starts to smoke, it's becoming rancid. Yeah. Um, and a lot of restaurants, if they have an open kitchen, you'll see all the flames and the smoke and, and you know, it's a big show. That's really not a good thing. Um, my choices for cooking oils, um, olive oil is my number one choice. Mm. Um, sometimes I'll use coconut oil. Um, coconut oil uh, really does have a really high um high smoke point. Um, oftentimes you'll, it, it will look like it's smoking, but there's water in it. So it'll actually be a little bit of steam as that water is mm-hmm. being cooked okay. off of it. Um, That's so um, I would never use something like um, a sesame oil for cooking that has, sesame oil has a lot of flavor, especially toasted sesame oil. So that I would use at the very end of the cooking process or as a drizzle once a dish is completely yeah. cooked. Um, I stay away from any kind of corn oil or vegetable oil. Um, those are typically going to be with um, genetically modified seeds um, and we wanna keep that out of our bodies. Yeah, that is so interesting. I think I posted something about preparation and cooking and we don't wanna cook, uh, vegetables till they're absolutely changed color. I mean, right. you're like broccoli. Uh, if it starts turning pale green, you've cooked it too long. Right, right, right. Broccoli is going to kind of be dull when you first starting start cooking it. Um, but as soon as it gets that super bright green, that's when you want to stop the cooking. Same thing with asparagus. Yep. Um, it, it just gets that vibrant color. And that's when it's ready. <laughs> yeah, right. It's amazing. Just absolutely amazing. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, could you give us an idea about maybe one of your most amazing clients that you've worked with? Oh, there have been a lot. Um, <laughs> so um, one woman in particular, she started taking my classes. She was introduced to my classes by a friend and she started attending them regularly. I used to do three live classes every month. Um, It has since cut way back on that because there are so many other things being offered. But she started coming to the classes um, and probably after about four or five months or so, she came to me after one of the classes and she said, the only recipes that I could get home are from your class. Oh, wow. And she's, then she um, actually sent me a letter that she had sent out to a bunch of friends, and she called it what I did on my summer vacation. And she talked about my classes and how um, she dropped weight. She was cut, She had her diabetes and her um, high blood pressure medication cut in half. She was completely off cholesterol medication. Um, she wow. said that she felt better than she had ever felt in her life. And she was in her mid fifties. Um, but yeah, she, she is like the, the epitome of my, my ultimate client. <laughs> um, other, yeah, other people have actually changed their pantries. They completely gutted their pantries. Um, I did a, a consultation with a woman in her home. We did a, um, visit to Whole Foods and I walked her through the aisles and how to read labels and understand what the labels mean and what how the nutrition information differs from the ingredient list. Um, we did a little private cooking class at her house and she wrote to me and she follows up with me every once in a while and she said, my pantry has never felt better. I walk in and I can just feel the buzz of everything in there. Um, <laughs> Your pantry felt better. I love that. Right, right. A happy pantry. <laughs> the name of a, of a good class, a happy pantry. Right. Yeah. All right. So I think before we close out, I think how would you tell our our group about the importance of developing a loving, healthy relationship with their food? 
Right. Um, when I, in all my classes and all my consultations, I help people to understand the energetics of food, which we did cover briefly, and also how to use their intuition. Um, some people are so closed off and, and untrusting of what their gut is telling them. Um, you know, if you're feeling stressed, most of us want to go for the, the sugar or the fat. And that feeds the cortisol, puts more fat cells in our bodies. The fat cells in turn produce more cortisol. So um, understanding the effects of something. Um, so I start with the actual menu planning. Um, you know, plan for some fresh food. Um, if it, that's not part of your diet right now, add one or two recipes per week. Mm. Um, not something that's going to take a long time because if people are not used to being in the kitchen and suddenly they're like, oh my gosh, this is taking me an hour every night. It's a gradual process. Um, but start with one, one or two recipes a week. Um, even if it's just a, a new salad recipe that you serve as a side dish with, you know, one of your regular things. Um, and um, when you choose the food, really take time and look for that ripe tomato or the zucchini that doesn't have any blemishes on it or the cilantro, the, the um, bunch of cilantro that's not wilted and doesn't have a bunch of brown leaves under the rubber band. You know, really pay attention to what you're bringing home. And then when you get it home, you know, just use all your senses. Look at the bright colors and um, smell everything. Um, smell your hands after touching all these vegetables. You smell like the garden. Like if, one of my favorite things to smell in the garden is to uh, go out to the tomato plants and just rub my hands in the tomato plants and it's like aromatherapy. Um, and I can just feel that energy going in. And um, then when, when you prepare the foods, listen, you know, hear the sound, hear how things are sizzling. Or if you're just baking something, be aware of the aromas that are starting to fill the air. Um, when you put something on your plate, Take time to try. Not everybody is going to be an expert at arranging food on the plate. But try to take time to actually make it look nice. Yeah. And when you, yeah. And when you sit down to actually enjoy the food, give thanks for it. Um, you know, thank the sunshine or thank the farmers that grew it or um, the thank the person who saved the seeds or, or the guy that drove it to the grocery store, you know, whatever, whatever works. Um, or just thank the food for the life that it's going to instill inside you. You know, that is so wonderful. I, I'm, I'm very inspired by you. I, it looks like somebody has asked a question. So uh, do you still do pantry makeovers? Boy, that's been a while. Yes, I do. I do still offer that. Okay. Yeah, and a, pan, a pantry makeover is when I actually come into your home and um, we I go through everything that's in your pantry, and that includes a dry pantry, freezer, refrigerator, and just give ideas about things that are probably not optimal. I have actually taken a garbage bag full of stuff from certain people's pantries saying, don't use this and then not replace it. Just never use it. <laughs> um, one woman I... I um, did a pantry review with, she had a lot of jello. Um, and oh, I wow. said, you need to get rid of the jello. I, and I showed her all the reasons why on the ingredient label. And she said, oh, well, it's not for me, it's for my grandkids. And I go, even more of a reason to get rid oh. of the jello. <laughs> so, <laughs> why do we feed our kids such crap? Right. I know. Right. And I, maybe, uh, yeah, what I think. I'm sensing, Cheryl, is that we need to do this again, okay? Sure. We, and, and maybe focus on something a little different so that people will know that Cheryl Rojic is the food guru, that we go to her because you've just answered a zillion questions that I have. I'm not a nutritionist, but I love food, and I think it's uh, we have to have good food, healthy food, and to uh, feed our body so that we can be healthy. So, right. <clears throat> And another thing that I didn't cover that I just came to mind um, is seasonal foods. Oh, yeah. uh, our bodies were made to eat certain things at certain times of the year, depending on where you live. 
Yeah. Um, so um, right now we're kind of coming into the harvest season. So all those longer storage foods that are meant for winter, like the whole grains and um, squashes and root vegetables, and those things really help our bodies to prepare for the colder weather, you know, to help keep us warm. Yeah. So I really focus a lot on um, soups and stews at this time of year. Um, upcoming classes are going to be the Great Pumpkin, which is one of my most popular classes every year. Uh, I do different pumpkin recipes from salads to desserts. So. That'll be great. So we want to know when that is so that we can post it, okay? Okay. And so I feel like, you know, we've worked to, to, together a little bit in the past, but I, I feel like that relationship is going to be uh growing because right. i think you're absolutely wonderful and uh every doctor should have a cheryl oh, well thank you and the feelings are <laughs> mutual thank you very much <laughs> okay well does anybody else have any questions for cheryl before we sign off i don't see any other thing now they can get in touch with you at cheryl at intentionalhealthcoach.com and that's also your website which you yes. are in the process of adding more and more wonderful things to it. So yes. folks, you need to pay attention to her website periodically and get some updates. And uh, do you have a mailing list? I do have a mailing list. Okay. And you can access that through the website. Okay. So and if you have trouble finding that, you can certainly email me and say, please add me to your list and I'll, I'll make sure it happens. Okay. Very good. So we have Labor Day weekend and... Everybody be safe and don't do anything I wouldn't do. Okay. And don't eat too much junk. <laughs> right. Make something healthy on Labor Day. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> All right. We'll see you guys next week. I think we're going to interview uh, Dr. Joan Sloss, our manual therapist, because she needs to talk to you about how important it is to keep your physical body healthy. Okay. All right, guys. We'll see you. Bye-bye.